and welcome to the annual general meeting of the Liverpool City Region Combined Authority. Uh, before we get into the meeting, I would just like to remind uh, everyone in the room if you can turn your mobile phones to silent for the duration of the meeting. I'd also like to uh, remind either members or officers presenting reports if you can please make sure that you use the microphones um, that are available to ensure that everyone in the chamber can hear um, the content of the report. And also just to remind um, that the novelty officers are recording the meeting and that will be uploaded to the novelty YouTube um, channel later today. And we also have the BBC here filming today for uh, a programme to, to be aired over the weekend. Can I uh, invite nominations uh, to be made for the appointment of the Chair of the Combined Authority? Can I nominate Councillor Phil Is that a second? I second okay. Are there any other nominations? Okay. Is that agreed that uh, Councillor Davies be the chair? Thank you. Um, just, just a few words from me. I, I do believe we, we've made a really strong start uh, over the last 12 months to the work that we've done um, around things like growth deal uh, and other issues which are covered in um, uh, a report later on on the agenda. And I'm sure over the next 12 months we'll be able to build on that really strong foundation and take advantage of you know, growth opportunities for the city region to attract investment and jobs. So it's, um, it's a really exciting time, I think, to be involved in the combined authority, and I thank, uh, thank everybody for their, uh, their support. Um, just a few uh, welcomes from me, really. I'd like to welcome uh, Councillor Ian Mayer, uh, leader, new leader of, of Sefton, and Councillor Andy Moorhead, new leader of Mosley, um, joining us for the first time. And also to say a big uh, thank, uh, welcome to um, Councillor Terry O'Neill, the Leader of Warrington Council, your first meeting, uh, Terry, as an associate member, and Fra Councillor Frank McKenna from West Lancs, your first meeting, Frank. Well, welcome. Um, so it's good to see, uh, good to see everybody here, um, and it's good to see uh, Deputy Mayor Anna Byrne deputising for Council and uh, for Mayor Anderson. So well, welcome, Anne. Right. Um, can I now invite nominations to be made for the appointments of Vice Chair of the Combined Authority? Well. Seconded? I second that. Seconded. Any other nominations? Okay. So, uh, can I just confirm Councillor Gary Barry Grimwald, formerly uh, elected Vice Chair of the Combined Authority. Well done, Barry. Thank you very much. Okay. Um, on with the agenda. Um, so, item two is apologies for absence. Angela. Apologies that we need to record. No? Okay, thank you. Okay, item three is declarations of interest. Can I ask, have we had any declarations of interest that we've received? None received. Okay. Fine, that takes us then on to item four combined authority nominations and appointments for 2015 16. And Angela's going to speak to this paper, please. Um, the statutory order which established the combined authority in April 2014 requires each constituent council to appoint one elected member as its representative and one elected member as its substitute representative. And similarly, the order requires the elect to appoint one of its members as a representative and another member as a substitute. Um, 
these ten people are in absence of their named substitutes form the full membership of the Declining Authority. The elect representation has not changed in, from the last meeting here, but there have been a number of amendments by some of the constituent councils, and the appointments of the constituent councils are set out in Table 1 on page 2 of the agenda uh, for uh, the motion of the Declining Authority. Um, both the Mercy Travel Committee and the Scrutiny Panel are appointed by the Combined Authority following nomination of the agreed number of elected representatives by the constituent councils. The names of the members to be appointed to Mercy Travel Committee and the Scrutiny Panel are set out in tables 2 and 3 on page 2. Uh, we do still await some uh, nominations for the Scrutiny Panel from um, Sefton and from Nosley. Uh, those will be reported to a future meeting chair. But it should be noted that the Conservative group nomination is Councillor Alan Jones, who say hand with the Notre Dame Event. Um, the Manager of Audit Committee has previously been agreed by the Combined Authority as six members appointed in equal numbers from the Combined Authority, Mercy Travel Committee, and the Scrutiny Panel. And it is also proposed that there should be a provision for a substitute member to be available to attend in the absence of the named members. The Authority is therefore being asked today to appoint its two members of the Audit Committee and its one named substitute. Um, members will be aware that the Combined Authority made provision in its constitution for non constituent councils to become associate members. Associate membership is an informal arrangement designed to promote closer working to, to promote a, a shared strategic approach. In the last municipal year, the West Lancashire District Council became an associate member, and recently, Warrington Council had uh, also become an associate member. The representatives from West Lancs and Warrington are set out for information at paragraph 4 2 of the report. Uh, finally, there have been some recent changes in the officers who undertake various functions on behalf of the client authority, and these are set out in paragraph 5. Members are asked to approve the recommendations of Paragraph 2 1 of the report and to indicate who will be the authority to act on what it means. Thank you, Angela, um, for taking us through that report. Can I ask members, are there, are there any questions? No questions? Okay, so can I um, formally move that we agree the recommendations in um, Paragraph uh, 2 of this report? They agree? Okay, thank you very much. Right. We need the audit committee, two audit committee nominations. Right. Do, do we need to provide names today or can they follow this committee? Right, okay. Uh, we need two members to sit on the audit committee, so any, anybody want to? So, and, and the Council Andy Moore has been proposed as one. Any volunteers to the, fill the second post of the audit committee? Rob, Rob, some, Rob, some have, Rob, some have greatness for us to Yeah, yeah, it's unanimous. Okay, so Councillor, Councillor Moorhead and Councillor Paul. And the name substitutes? Barry, Barry, Barry Grumwell, the name substitute. Okay, is that okay? So we'll agree those recommendations with those additional uh, nominations. Thank you very much. Okay. Uh, so that takes us then on to item five, review of the combined authority arrangements. And Angela, this is you again, please. Thank you, Chair. And when the combined authority was set up in, in April 2014, members of the authority recognised the need to review progress from time to time to ensure that the authority was set up appropriately to promote its statutory functions. The statutory remit of the combined authority relates only to transport, economic development and generation. Economic development and regeneration are not specifically defined by the relevant legislation, but the authority has developed protocols which set out how these areas are being developed within the city region. The report sets out at uh, section 4 what the specific achievements of the authority have been to date in the main areas of operation. Uh, these are already significant and ongoing across all of the relevant functions. The report also notes how the requirement to have a scrutiny process has been successfully implemented particularly in relation to capacity building, but also in identifying a work program which will contribute to the effectiveness of the authority as a whole. In particular, the outcome of the first scrutiny review on European funding appears later on uh, in the business agenda of the meeting. And the scrutiny review references this review in relation to consideration of the European protocol. Apart from the statutory order, the authority's constitution is the main document which regulates how the authority operates. 
whilst the Constitution has been considered as part of this review, it is not considered necessary at this stage to make major changes to it. But there are some changes suggested which is felt to contribute to the efficient operation of the authority. The proposed amendments and the reasons they are put forward are set out in the appendix to the report. Members of the authority who are members of the constituent councils are asked to approve these amendments. Such approval needs to be unanimous. It's quite far in the Constitution that amendments have to be unanimous. One of the inevitable consequences of the success achieved to date is the need to consider whether there is sufficient capacity available to the authority to continue and improve upon success. In that regard, members are asked to know that this is an issue which is being considered by the City Region Chief Executives and the Authority's Head of Paid Service. The recommendations are contained at Section 2.1 of the report and the Authority is asked to approve. Thank you. Any comments, questions on this report? To raise? No? Okay. So, can we agree the recommendations in paragraph two? They agreed? Okay, thank you very much. Okay, we now move on then to item six, which is the Liverpool City Region Compliant Authority Forward Plan. David, do you want to take us through this, please? Thanks, Chair. Um, the City Region Compliant Authority uh, has a specific remit to provide strategic and transparent region uh, across a small number of areas, including economic development. Uh, housing, transport, employment and skills. As part of good governance and transparent leadership uh, we provide in the form of plan for your consideration today. This will clearly evolve as the year goes on, but we've highlighted already a heavy work plan for this committee uh, moving forward over the next 12 months since we were approved today. Okay, thanks David. Uh, again, any, anybody wish to make any comments on the forward plan? I think, it, as you say David, it's, it's an evolving document that will become populated as, as We're just being uh, asked to agree this um, plan this morning as a sort of start of the tender. Can we agree that? Can we agree that plan? The recommendations in paragraph two, are they agreed? Yep, yeah. okay, thanks very much. Right, so I think that brings us to the end of the, the annual meeting. Um, and then we're now going to move seamlessly into the ordinary business meeting, items on the agenda. So if I can then just direct you to some of the, just the preliminaries we have to do. Um, item seven, apologies for absence, Angela. I would say apologies, yeah. Okay. And item uh, eight, declarations of interest. Have we received any? No, I Okay. Uh, item nine <coughs> are minutes of the uh, combined authority meeting held on the 17th of April. Can I ask, are these approved as a correct record of the meeting? They agreed? Very small. Uh, Robert? Uh, I think on page 20, uh, uh, three. Just in technical assistance, on technical assistance, a small, small item. Yeah, well spotted. Well spotted, yeah. Okay, so we're, we're, with, with that amendment, can we agree those as a correct record? They agreed. Thank you very much. Great. So that then takes us on to item um, 10 on the agenda, which is the Liverpool City Region Council uh, framework. And, and Jed, you're going to take us through this, please. Thank you, Jed. Good morning. The, uh, this report is um, setting out uh, work to date on developing a more streamlined and uh, allied approach to utilisation of capital, which covers uh, uh, probably the DLBF placement moment and the work growth fund uh, about two years, which we've been allocated from previous uh, It's deliberately a framework, Chair, rather than a strategy, so if there aren't Specific kind of uh, prioritised uh, projects in this particular point. What we're to do is work through a methodology that uh, is consistent for those two funding streams that I just mentioned, but also gives us the opportunity to be able to design something that can take account of one of the streams of a similar kind of nature uh, where these become available uh, in the future. The uh, logic of the framework approach is to support the delivery of uh, sites, uh, particularly which require some form rather than uh, acting by themselves or where uh, the type of uh, intervention wouldn't be supported by the uh, 
sign the existing of Main Street ESIT program. Um, we, we have a well established that those situations in the Brussels office, and, and James Sharples represents us there. James's work helps us keep track and an intelligence gather on funding and policy issues, and also identify potential funding partners and so on. It's a direct link from the combined authority into EU funding structures. Um, and the report identifies that bid for these funds can be a, a complex issue. It's time consuming. We need to identify transnational partners. There's a requirement to identify match funds. There's a, a two-stage application process. And obviously, it's a highly competitive process. So the report is looking to focus down on the sorts of issues and themes that we as a city region should pursue from the transnational funding opportunities. It's particularly important to James and BP in providing advice on this, that we have that focus, because the reports of the suggested approach in delivering our focus are a key part of James' future work stream to target this funding opportunity for the city region. Based on a series of workshop sessions that have been had with a number of partners across the city region, Five priority areas have been identified and then uh, shown in section 3.11 of the report. They pick up transport infrastructure, sustainable urban mobility in smart cities, the marine and maritime cluster, e health, business cluster, eco innovation, green growth, and resource efficiency. They fit very well with the city region's green strategy and priorities. So the report also identifies action networks of relevant people across the city region and those networks and individuals are identified in the appendix that will give us a resource to inform the development of the future bids for the city region and to ensure that we pull together people with the right skills and expertise and give us an ability to ultimately to develop and develop further projects. Leads for the networks will also be linked through James in, in Brussels and it was a facility to feed into commissioners within Brussels. The report is seeking to gain the CA endorsement of, of the theme set out and also support for the concept and for the resource of, that we require to deliver on these action networks. There's a potential for a great deal to be gained from this and in order to maximise that potential as a city region we need to be focused and we need to be agile. So, Recommendations are at section two. Take any questions in relation to the report. Okay, thanks, Frank. Any questions or comments, members, on on this report? Anyone wants to say anything? Robert? Yeah. Thanks, Chair. First of all, a great report. In today's context, where we see easy reduction and pressures to see this approach, is really a refreshing opportunity here for us accessing large funds. All about design to see the anyway, focused collaboration is what's needed to bring together the relevant parts in a very focused path, fashion, targeting a clear goal against which you can access funds. One, one specific around the uh, Horizon 2020 fund is an 80 billion pound program for R&D. And it's, it's there, I think, where the university should be brought in as a principal partner. Uh, it's right in, in their territory. It's a large fund that we have universities here able to uh, identify opportunities and we can capitalise on this one. So I really welcome it. But in that particular decision about the horizon, I think university's engagement is quite vital. Frank, do, do you want to come back on? Now we need to look at other opportunities for Europe, and, and there is quite a substantial amount of money that is, you know, we can bid for. Um, and so I think it's if we don't do this, we'll be missing a real opportunity. So um, I, I think it's a, a really good way forward, and uh, uh, thank you, Frank, for the, for the work that um, you know, the officers have done around this. So uh, recommendations are in section two of this report. Can we agree those recommendations? Yeah. Thank you very much. Okay, that takes us then on to the 
uh, scrutinising it in 12, scrutiny, scrutiny review of European funding. Um, so uh, can, I, can I just say, you know, I'm really pleased to see this report and obviously the scrutiny committee have been doing some really good work around this uh, topic. And uh, David, you're going to take us through this, please. Thank you, Chair. First of all, to give the apologies of the Chair, Kevin Wainwright, who is unfortunately on the has a work commitment the he can't be here today. This is the first piece of work that's been undertaken by the scrutiny panel, um, and it was a topic that was identified on their development today, or one of their development days. It's not only an important report because of the context, the, the uh, European funding agenda, but also it enabled the panel to develop a, a way of working together as a scrutiny methodology for the future. Uh, so I think it's proved to be useful in a number of respects. Um, and I want to, at that point, thank the uh, scrutiny officers in the respective authorities that make up the combined authority for their input into that process. That's been invaluable in helping the panel members to, uh, to frame their, their way of working going forward. So thank you to them. Uh, as you'll see from the report, because the European funding agenda is such a wide agenda, uh, the panel focused on two particular areas. Uh, they are the commissioning and bidding framework uh, being developed within the local delivery of the European programme for 2014 to 2020, uh, and ensuring that that secures the right outcomes for the city region. And secondly, the governance and the governance arrangements uh, that are being put in place to shape and oversee the local operation of the programme and to ensure that they're effective, robust and, and accountable. Um, the panel also recognised that quite a bit of this work for the, the programme going forward is still under development and in discussion with the government, so it's not a, a, a complete piece of work on a finished product as of yet, but hopefully the panel's been able to influence the way um, the, the discussions are going. You'll see in the paper that the conclusions are set out in those two areas in Appendix 1 to the paper and a number of general recommendations. Um, the uh, panel are inviting the uh, authority to respond back to them on those recommendations uh, and Appendix 2 of the report sets out a suggested draft response if members are minded to, uh, to approve that and uh, whatever the panel uh, the Today will then be put back into the report. So going back to the scrutiny of their July meeting. Happy to take any questions, Chair. Thank you very much. Okay. Um, in, a, in a moment, I'm going to ask Mike Palin to take us through the response to the recommendations. But I just just want to formally kind of say that I, I'm really grateful to the scrutiny panel for this report. I think it's really, um, really good, really helpful, uh, and obviously very um, you know, it's quite a rigorous piece of work. Um, so formally, I think we should record our thanks to the, the panel for, for this um, uh, report and recommendations. Before we go into how we're going to respond to the recommendations, can I just ask members, does anybody want to ask any questions or uh, make any comments? No? Okay. If not then, I'm, I'm going to ask um, Mike Palin, who's our lead chief exec on, on European issues, if Mike, you can take us through the, the uh, response and the actions on the recommendations set out on pages 72 to 77, please. Yes, thank you, Chair. Uh, I'll be very brief just to outline, uh, as David said, that when the uh, scrutiny panel did their work, there was actually a lot of change underway within the, way the processes that governments were applying to the uh, European programme. So we'd like to thank them for the work they've done because it will be particularly helpful in forming how we engage with governments next stage of the process. Uh, the, government, the, the, the authority received the report at its last meeting that outlined some of those changes. And in essence, um, the programme is being nationalised in terms of its government processes. Uh, CLG will be the ultimate decision making body and the structures we have in the city region will simply be advisory to that process. Uh, and secondly, CLG have issued a number of calls for projects since the, the scrutiny panel did their work. Um, so the, the report outlines how over the next few months we'll be reviewing those changing governance processes, reflecting on those changes, and using the scrutiny panel's work to actually design the appropriate model for the city we put forward. As members will be aware, we've received a number of reports over the last year that outline what our key priorities are. I, I, and Jed today has presented another uh, report that outlines our key capital uh, 
priority going forward. So one of the recommendations of the, the panel brought forward was to actually ensure that government acknowledge what are our priorities. And as, a, uh, as an authority, we've done that over the next few months. So just to very quickly summarise, by the autumn of this year, we will have reviewed fully the government's changes uh, being brought forward by government. We will we'll use the scrutiny panel's work to inform uh, the best model for our city region. And we'll be able to report back to uh, the authority on how that will work going forward. Okay, thanks, Mike. Um, so, any anybody want to uh, make any points or ask any questions about our, our proposed actions in response to the scrutiny panel's report? No. Rob. No, I'll certainly, um, certainly echo those comments, uh, Rob. Uh, so, uh, if I can ask you, can we um, agree the recommendations um, in that report uh, on page 59, uh, section 2, are they agreed? Okay, thanks very much. And can we can we kind of formally add that we thank the scrutiny panel for, for, for you know for doing this piece of work and it's really helpful. Okay, thanks very much. Okay, I then need to move on then to item 13, which is the, uh, the minutes of the Mercer, Mercer Travel Committee meeting held on the 16th of April, 2015, page 79 to 90. Uh, can I ask if these are confirmed. Can we confirm those minutes? Is that great? I think that's agreed. Right. Um, I now need to move into part two of the combined authority, and there's a couple of items which um, are we have to take under exempt um, business. If I can just say under section 100A brackets for the Welcome Act 1972. Um, we sometimes have to exclude the, the public from uh, meetings where items of business um, are, are exempt uh, as defined in the um, undermentioned paragraphs of part one of schedule 12 where it repays the act. I'm just going to ask Angela um, just to explain why these, um, these items are, are confidential and in mean, I mean, the exempt parts of the agenda. Okay, thanks, Chair. I mean, as members will be aware, we very rarely, in fact this is the first time that, since the client has been established that we have used this uh, provision and uh, we, as officers, we do make efforts to ensure that uh, all of the, our reports can be, can be uh, considered in, in the agenda. However, in these two particular instances, um, we are required to go into private business so that members can consider them. In the case of item 14, the Skills Capital Fund is a competitive bidding process uh, and it's not yet reached its conclusion and that is the reason why it needs to be considered in uh, private agenda. In the case of uh, item 15, um, the information that's been provided to the Crime Authority by the Department of Business Innovation Skills has been tagged restricted commercial um, because it contains commercial financial information and that is the reason why that item needs to be considered in private agenda. Okay, so I formally have to, uh, can I therefore ask um, some, somebody in the, one of our members to move the resolution um, for the reasons set out in the agenda and the um, reason that Angela's given that these be taken in an exempt session. Could somebody move that please? Is that seconded? Okay, so that's agreed. So I, can I sort of respectfully ask the press and public to, to leave us please? Thank you very much for your attendance. Thank you.